There are no words. There just are no words for today. Good morning. Today is a moving day for us. We are leaving sadly, but also excited. Uh, leaving this Black Hills Forest boondocking spot, which we've loved so much. It's so beautiful. And we're heading to the Badlands of South Dakota. I'm expecting a completely different terrain where we have forest and green grass. I'm thinking we may have grasslands out there. I don't know, I really don't know. I've seen some pictures, but I'm um, anticipating it's gonna be quite a bit different. Anyhow, today's our moving day. Thought we'd bring you along for the whole experience. Won't bore you with all the details like cleaning and putting stuff away, but we'll take you incrementally through what actually occurs. The inside is just about prepped and ready to go. That's typically my responsibility. I take care of making sure everything is put down off of the counters, that everything is clear of the slides in the bedroom, the living room, the kitchen. Um, dishes are done, bathroom is ready to go. Things are down off of shelves. Um, the dogs are ready as far as their set up here. We actually harness them in. We use something that looks like this and I pull out the um, seat belts from the couch, put the dog's harnesses on, and then they get secured while we're traveling. Brian has the outside. Let's go check and see how he's doing out there. How are you doing out here? Uh -huh. Need any help? Nope, I think I'm good to go. Good. Something that I always forget to do, and I don't know why, is to secure this pocket door. And we use that when we're showering to kind of close off the shower area so that it stays warm and you know whatever but we'll be going down the road and all of a sudden this thing will go woo and slam so i'm remembering it now i just thought i would share that with you also part of my job is to bring in the slides so let's go ahead and do all right we have success with the kitchen slide now we're going to bring in which one do you want brian we're going to bring in the living room slide so back at it here and who has slides knows that you always take a big sigh of relief when they come in, right, Bray? Yeah. Some of the things I do out here, I just do a quick uh, walk around of the RV. Uh, obviously, I've got jacks and jack pads, so I'll pull those jacks up. And uh, even though the light goes out on the dash that tells me the jacks are up. I always come out to make sure that they are indeed up before moving because uh, that could be faulty. You just never know. So that's it. Get the jacks up, back down off of my blocks that I have up, and uh, hopefully we won't sink. We should be fine. There we go. Also, just for safe measure and as a double check, after Brian does his walk around, I usually go around just one more time and, and check things out. And you just never know, two sets of eyes are better than one. Once I get going, I don't think I'm going to stop. Oh, that's a good idea. So I get, you know, mostly out of here. Okay. If I get up there, I'll be fine. So, hey. copy. 10 4. Every happily married RVing couple carries these with them. These are walkie-talkies to help you back in, back out, straighten up, go up, come down, whatever that might be. So I'm gonna talk to Brian a little bit and help him back up. I never know which side to stand on, left, right. He says, just stand so that I can see you in my mirrors. We so loved this spot. I, again, I can't say it enough. It's just, I call it epic. Brian hates corny words like that, but oh my God, look at this place. It is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I hate to leave it. Best part of all, it's free. Uh, here I come. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. He's done. Woo! All right, success in backing up out of that spot. That's where we were. So I'm gonna get in the car and follow him. We're going to a store to pick up some dog food and then we'll hook up the Jeep. Sweet. That was good. These are always so fun. I love them. It means that we're going to have a new backyard. That's always awesome. Um, and the scenery changes constantly. So while we loved, loved this boondocking spot, again, I can't say it enough. Um, we're
we're gonna have another spot and it may not be as beautiful or may not be as green or woodsy. In fact, I know it's not gonna be woodsy. I think it's gonna be grassy. It's someplace new and someplace different to explore and to experience. So these are exciting days. The dogs get a little anxious, a little nervous, but Brian and I truly love it. So we've made it down the hill. There's Brian in front of me. All right, so we got the dog food. We found a nice level parking lot, nice big level parking lot where we can hook up the Jeep and that's what Brian's doing now. We've got the Jeep towed hooked up on the back. We did a walk around again one more time just to make sure everything was as it's supposed to be. And the last thing we need to do before we hit the road is uh, have a couple of cocktails. No. Um, it's actually to make sure that we're dialed in on the GPS. Yeah. So I already have all the um, stopping points in. So um, I simply go to my trip planner since I've already tripped it, uh, planned the trip, go to my save trips, go into the Badlands. This is the location we were at. We're going to stop by Camping World oh, yeah. to. Uh, pick up a spare water pump. I think ours might be going out, I'm not quite sure. It's acting funky, so I'd rather have a spare on board just in case since we're going to the Badlands and um, going right through Rapid City, why not? Why not? Right. And then uh, we'll go over to Wasta. There's a uh, Express 24 mobile gas station there that a lot of people talk about. It's got a little camping um, area, I think four or five spots, something like that. It's like 20 bucks a night. But anyway, we're gonna stop there, get some water, and then head out to our spot in the Badlands and uh, get all set up. It should take us about uh, two and a half, three hours. And do you have all of those different stops plugged into the GPS? Yep, so every, allow you every stop and waypoint that I wanna stop at, it'll, um, it'll take that, I can add, take things away, so yeah. Pretty sweet, cool. plus and it's, it's, it's an RV, uh, GPS for RVs, it has uh, all the routing for you know, low bridges and avoiding those kinds of things, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Are we ready? We're ready. Let's all right. Up. We'll make sure everyone has their seatbelt on and we'll hit the road. All right. Your seatbelt on. How about you guys? Look at you guys are ready to go. They've got their seatbelts on. I just need to get mine on. Here we go. Did you get the water pump? No. Aww. So, um, you know, like a lot of these, you know, independent RV repair shops, dealers, so, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, $249 for a water pump, name brand, and a cheap Chinese knockoff for $113. Twice as much as any you can get them anywhere else. Well, shoot. Get them on Amazon for about 70 bucks, so. Ow. So you think Camping World is our next stop? Maybe, we'll see. Such is the life of full-time RVers. Yeah. On the road again and went over to Camping World to price their water pumps and didn't end up getting one there either. Um, basically, we could get one for about half price on Amazon. And since the water pump isn't completely out, it's just a little noisy. And we thought we would just go ahead and get one for peace of mind. We're gonna wait and either find one later on down the road or order it from Amazon. So off we go. We're now headed to Wasta to get some water and then on to our site at the Badlands. We are at our fourth location trying to find water. Um, this happens, again, part of the challenges of full-time RV living. The first three places, actually the first two places that identified as, as having water, um, they were both closed down when we got there. But the information that's out there on the uh, apps and um, internet showed that they're both open. So that's just one of the things that you have to deal with. We finally found an RV park that's semi-close, I'd say maybe 10 miles away from our final destination that charges for water. So thank goodness we're pulled in right now and we're, we're doing that. Um, let's see what we've got going on. 
nice little RV park. It's a good Sam RV park. I'm standing here in the shade. Woo! Sorry, let me turn around here so you can see. Um, once we finish this, getting the water, then we'll head to our dispersed camping spot. Something that we learned fairly early on, we anticipate, or we look at the, um, the travel planner and it'll give us two hours, let's say two hours and 30 minutes to get to our next destination. We have consistently doubled that time regardless of what the GPS says because of the unknown. Um, before we've gotten to our, our campground or to our RV par park and maybe there's something wrong with that site and we have to go find a, a plan B or an alternative place to stay. Well, this is a situation that we had with water today, so we anticipated two and a half hours. We're now into this three and a half hours plus. We had to try and find a, a water pump, which we ended up deciding not to get um, and keep our fingers crossed that it, it holds out. I think it will. It was just kind of noisy, so we thought maybe we'd do get one just in case. But here we are, we're getting water. Next stop is going to be our location, and it's called the Nomad Dispersed Camping Badlands National Park. It's also a good idea to have a plan B should we get to the Badlands and the temperatures start to creep up and maybe our AC can't necessarily keep up with that because we have to keep our Frenchies cool. Um, Brian's in checking right now with this particular RV park to see if it's um, viable as far as price goes and if they have any spaces available. And then we'll keep that as a plan B should we need it. There was a sign that we just passed that said um, deep mud. Many rigs have had to be pulled out on July 5th. So keep your fingers crossed. Ah, there is some rain um, anticipated. I think it's about a 20% chance for the next couple of nights. So we will keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't become a problem for us. Brian wants me to go scout around. I'm gonna go check things out. I'm not feeling 100% confident about this area. It scares me, to be honest with you. Update. So the first spot that we pulled into here at um, Nomad Dispersed was a great spot with a great view. The only problem, it was so close to the edge and there is a storm that's supposed to come in um, actually the next three nights. Not, not necessarily severe, but winds about 20 to 30 miles per hour. And I couldn't do it. I, get, I have wind issues from a storm that um, I was in, in in Phoenix a long time ago. And just being on that edge, I just have these really irrational thoughts of getting blown over the side. So I said no. And I don't think Brian was too excited about it either. So we're moving on to another spot down the road. Again, this is a great reason to make sure that you give yourself enough time to get to your new spot. I can't tell you how many times this happens to us and maybe it's because we're rookies, I don't know. So we're moving down now. We're going to another spot about a mile down the road. It's more dispersed camping. We'll see how it goes. Wish us luck. This was, I have to say, the most perfect day to film or to record our moving day because we've had several things go wrong and this is not unusual. Um, a lot, this happens a lot. And again, maybe this is because we're newbies, because we're rookies and we haven't gotten this all figured out. But man, I tell ya. So we went up to the Badlands um, the cliff overlook, it was nomadic, nomad dispersed. And as I mentioned, I, I couldn't deal with the fact that there is there are some storms coming in and we would be right on the edge. In fact, when we checked in, or actually when we were getting water, that's what it was, the lady in the office told us, uh, she said, good luck up there on the, the cliffs because there was a trailer that went over not too long ago. Now I am a little skeptical, maybe this is true, but I feel like I would have heard that on the news because that's a big deal just planted a seed and made me really nervous because um, the wind was blowing a little bit we were we were rocking just lightly I want to say maybe the winds were 15 miles an hour when we were up there so 
We then found a second site that you could actually pull in a little, little bit away from the edge of the cliff. Only problem was I couldn't get to it with the Jeep because of a huge mud puddle. And someone recommended that it might be difficult for a motorhome to get in there. So we pulled over in a big parking lot and started going through the Atlas and through our apps. We use Allstays and Campendium and just started going through everything and finding out, okay, what's around us? What's the next big town? Where can we stay? So we have to leave, unfortunately. Brian said he could have handled it. He could have stayed there at least one night to see how it was. I chickened out and I feel bad about that, but uh -huh. here we are. So we, we found an RV park. We didn't want to have to spend any money but it looks like we're going to have to. There is nothing around here. There's no Walmart, Cabela's, Cracker Barrel, nothing, no rest stops, anything. So we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. We're kind of at the mercy of an RV park. And the, the positive side of that is going to be that it is really warm. And you folks in Arizona are going to just laugh at me because I've already gotten weak when it comes to dealing with the heat. Um, warm means like 92. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but it's it's a little warm and we'll be able to turn the AC on. Bummer is we're gonna be about 32 miles away and we're gonna have to travel back this direction in order to go to Wall Drug, which, you know, maple donuts, free ice water and five cent coffee, have to come back for that. So we're on our way to the next RV park. Hopefully it is not next to a train station or a train or railroad tracks, anything like that, because that's been our luck. Wish us luck. I'll check in when we get there. Unbelievable. Well, we're going down the highway and I look up, I'm following behind Brian and the awning started coming out going 80 miles an hour. We weren't, but most people were um, going down the highway. It starts to open up. We have no idea why. We're parked on the side of the highway now. Brian got it tucked in and we're duct taping it so we can limp along to our next RV park, which is about 22 miles away. I don't know why this always happens to us, but it seems to happen on the side of a busy highway. I don't know. Thank God for a nice deep shoulder. But duct tape is key. We're gonna tape it up and we're gonna hit the road. Person is attached to the roof, and there's no way I can wrap it. There are no words. There just are no words for today. When we set out this morning to record our moving day, we had no idea of the challenges that we were going to face, which really is like any day. We have no idea. Um, some cases we may know where we're going because we've been there before or, you know, but this time um, we didn't know where we were going. Total of, I believe it's nine hours that we've been on the road or stopped or dealing with duct tape or whatever that might be since we left this morning. Um, and, and these are, I mean, this is just kind of what you deal with. You don't know your rig is your home and the more you use it the more wear and tear that it goes through so things break down and you just never know exactly what's going to happen we still have no idea why the um, awning came open when we were driving down the highway brian thinks that it was a me locking mechanism that broke or came off not quite sure but i think we really avoided a disaster too with that thing if i had not been following behind him i don't know that uh, we would have seen that open up it just started to open up maybe about two feet uh, because I was behind him and I had the walkie-talkie and called to him quickly and said the awning is opening up for whatever reason so he was able to pull over quickly but we are not in the Badlands we are in an RV park that was across from a gas station where we were filling up and kind of trying to regroup um, we had reservations to go stay at another RV park on the other side of the Badlands and we found out as we were approaching that it would require would have required um, that we buy a pass to get into the Badlands National Park and then pay another fee on top of that for the RV park. So luckily this one just appeared right across from the gas station and that's where we're going to spend the night, uh, maybe even two nights until we get this awning situation figured out. 
so hopefully that gives you some idea of what moving day is like. This is not typical. There are a few things here that are typical, but overall not typical. I would say uh, we typically try to double the time it takes us to get from point A to point B to give us some buffer in case things go wrong, um, but not typical at all. Oh, one more thing. Did I mention we have a severe thunderstorm coming in? Yep, that's correct. In the background, I don't know if you can see the clouds, but there's something coming in. Thank God we are not on the edge of that cliff at Badlands. I would be freaking out having a big, severe thunderstorm coming in. And something else I wanted to uh, just update you on. When we were there, Brian actually saw the fifth wheel that had gone over the cliff. He said, darn, I wish I would have taken a picture. I said, why did you tell me? And he says, why did you think I didn't tell you? Anyhow, probably, I'm glad that, that he didn't, that that would have just done it for me right then and there. But anyhow, wanted to update you on that and um, yeah, we're getting ready to enjoy a severe thunder show. So we're here in the Badlands. Uh, it's pretty windy up here, so the audio is going to be crappy. But anyway, we uh, came up here yesterday, decided not to stay. Um, just not a whole lot of uh, area to, to park level. And most of what you see up here are travel trailers and fifth wheels. And uh, it's been about two weeks ago now, but I've uh, never had anything go over the side here due to the winds and weather, ever, apparently, according to the rangers, but it did happen. Um, so a gentleman in his fifth wheel that was right here in this particular spot um, went over the edge. I guess he was uh, injured, not seriously, he was outside of his fifth wheel and apparently the wind kind of picked his fifth wheel up and kind of went over the top of him and then uh, down into the abyss and that's what's left of his fifth wheel so that that can happen here in the badlands uh, you know that's kind of why it's called the badlands 